Hello everyone and welcome to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. This is Dawn Polly from D Polly Designs and I'm so glad you could join me. Today I'm using some products from the Ron Fawn Whoosh Kites collection. This is such an adorable little collection. The stamp set comes with these cute little mice and it has three different kites to go with it. And the sentiments are great as well. You can purchase the coordinating dies to go with it, and you can purchase these awesome stencils as well. If you don't like to color your images with markers, then these stencils are the way to go. These stencils line up with each part of the image to make it super quick and easy to color the images. So let me show you how these stencils work. I went ahead and stamped out all of the images. I stamped a bunch of them because I wasn't sure what I wanted to use, and then I'll just keep the rest for later. These stencils are numbered at the top of the stencil, one, two, and three, depending on which images you're using. And they also have little etchings of the images in them, so you know exactly which image goes where. I don't know if you can see the etchings, but it's pretty awesome to have the visual to help you as well. I also want to apologize for my voice. I am a little sick, so this is not what my voice usually sounds like. Okay, I picked out the image that I wanted to use, and I'm just going to line the first image up and then tape it onto my cardstock. I'm going to use some magnets to hold it in place. You can use a sticky mat or you can use some pixie spray as well, but I'm just taping it in place. I'm going to use some Distress Oxide Pumice Stone to color the mouse's body. You can use whatever ink you want to as well. I'm using uh, these small blending brushes, but I don't have a lot of them. Small blending brushes are definitely the best way to color in these images. You can get more shading that way. I don't have a lot of the small brushes, but I did just place an order with Scrapbook Pal to get some more. They have a pretty good variety to choose from. Then I'm going to take some frayed burlap and just put it around the edges of the mouse to add a little bit of the shading. Then you take the next stencil which is for the mouse's belly and you place it right over the belly. I'm using some tattered rose for it and look at how quick and easy that is. Then there is a stencil for the mouse's ear and nose. And I'm just using the same tattered rose for it. I'm using just a little bit, not much. And the last image for the mouse is the string. I placed the stencil over the string. And I'm using a very light amount of gathered twig uh, color. And it's that quick and easy to color these images in. Let's do the heart kite next. I line up the first section of the heart. I'm using peacock feathers and I'm using my big blending tool. I also color the ribbon on the kite with the same color. Like I said, this definitely works better with the smaller blending tools, but I didn't want to mix my colors. But since this image isn't as detailed as the mouse, it worked out just fine for me. Sometimes you have to work with the materials that you have. I cleaned off my stencil, but you can wait until you're done if you want to. I line up the next section, and now I'm going to use some squeeze lemonade to do the next section and then the small ribbon on the, on the kite. I'm just going to keep repeating the same process for the rest of the kite. There's no order in which you have to go in, so if you want to do all the peacock feather color first, uh, and then do all the squeeze lemonade next. You can do that. This way you don't have to keep switching back and forth between the two colors. I think it's really fun to stencil images. I know I enjoy it way more than coloring with my alcohol markers. And it's that easy to color in these images. I went ahead and die cut all of my images with the coordinating die. And I'm going to use the Lawn Fun Grassy Border Dye to cut my grass out. And I did put it on an angle so it looks kind of like a little grassy hill. And now I'm going to make my own cloud stencil. If you have a cloud dye, then you don't need to do this. You can just use your cloud dye. Or if you wanted to purchase one, I put a link to the Lawn Fun Puffy Cloud Border in the description box below. 
but I'm making my own by just cutting some lumps in a white piece of cardstock. I'm using my Distress Oxide tumbled glass and just putting a very light coating on my paper. I don't want the sky to be overpowering. I realized I didn't want the cloud pattern for the sky to be all the same, so I flipped the paper over and I'm cutting out some more lumps, slightly different from the one that I did before. This way it won't look like the same pattern through the whole sky as you're coming down the paper. I basically do this for the entire paper. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom. Sometimes I do just because I like the whole paper done, but sometimes I don't. It all depends on my mood. Today I'm going down as far as where the grass is going to cover it. Okay, so now let's start to assemble the card. I'm going to adhere my little grassy hill onto the bottom of the cardstock. I'm laying out where I want my mouse and my kite to go. I decided just to stamp the string directly onto the card front rather than die cutting it out. I felt like it wouldn't stand out as much this way. I didn't want the string as long as the stamp is, so I put a piece of tape on the end of the stamp. I covered about an inch of it. Just remember to take the tape off before you actually stamp it onto the card front. I decided to add a butterfly on the card front. I colored it with the stencil and I used some of my Distress Oxide Squeezed Lemonade. And I'm stamping its little squiggly line that shows it's flying in the air with some black ink. And then I trimmed the card front down just enough to leave a white border around the card once it's done being assembled. I put foam tape on the back of all of my images and I'm adhering them to the card front. I stamped the sentiment, you make my heart sore, onto the green grass. And to finish off the card, I adhered it to an A2 size white card base. Now, this is where my card was supposed to end, but after looking at it, I decided I wanted more clouds in the sky. Now, you can either leave it like this with the three clouds, or you can add more clouds if you want to. If you want, you can drop me a comment and let me know if you like it better with the three clouds or you like it with the five, because I couldn't decide. I want to thank you for joining me on the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel and I would love for you to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of the card. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the Scrapbook Pals YouTube channel and their other social media platforms so you don't miss out on any great inspirational videos. Also, check out their website for any new releases they might have. And as always, I want to thank you for spending your time with me and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.